Hello, welcome to the Extended SA training session. My name is Scott Smith. I'm the Extended SA coordinator at CHS. You have been chosen by an IB student to be their guide through this research process. So let's get to the slideshow. Okay, supervising the Extended SA, here we go. What is the Extended SA? It is a 4,000 word maximum essay that will correspond to a diploma program subject that the students are either in, enrolled in, uh, have taken, or can show competency in. So for example, dance is an option as an extended essay subject, even though we don't offer dance here at the school, they can still write their extended essay in dance if they have been trained in dance. So I believe psychology, uh, we don't offer that anymore at the school, but they can still do an extended essay in psychology, psychology if they have taken AP psychology. The extended essay is part of the diploma program core, the core being made up of the extended essay, CAS, which is like a community service thing, and then TOK, which is theory of knowledge, which is kind of like a uh, philosophy class, kind of. It's more about knowledge. So if students complete their CAS work, then they are eligible for bonus points towards their diploma. Bonus points come from a culmination of their extended essay and TOK grade. I'll explain that in the next slide. Students need 24 points to get their diploma with a maximum of 45 points. They can get their points from their six classes that they will be taking and each class has seven points. So as you can see here, six classes times seven equals 42. EE and TOK can earn them up to three bonus points towards their 24 points that they need. Here's how they can get bonus points. So depending on how well they do in theory of knowledge, TOK, and depending on how well they do on the extended essay, uh, if they do excellent and excellent, they can get three bonus points. However, if they do not do their work they're supposed to be doing in TOK, or they do not do their extended essay, they will get an N, and an N uh, does not qualify them for their diploma. They won't get it. So they need to get at least a D on the extended essay, uh, we're going to say, to qualify. Let's shoot for the D. Actually, let's shoot for the A, but you know, you know how students are. Okay. How is this graded? First of all, we don't grade it at the school. We send it out and then someone uh, officially from IB will grade the papers. The papers are graded on the following criteria. Focus and method, knowledge and understanding, critical thinking, which is the big chunk, presentation, which is just, um, you know, do they use type 12 font and present it well and engagement, uh, which is part of what's called, they get this from what's called the EERPPF form, which we'll talk about in a little bit. You can see it's six marks. Um, in the past, this is kind of how the grades were broken down. So they need to get at least seven points to get a D. A D, to be honest, is not that hard to get. You can get six points alone from just reflections, and that has nothing to do with the paper itself. Uh, you can get six points alone by making a good research question and having good methodology. The chunk comes from this 12 here, and that's, are they writing critically or are they writing descriptively? If they're writing critically, then they can get 12 points. If they're writing descriptively, they're not gonna get those 12 points. Let's keep going. Role of supervisor, you are, going to spend roughly three to five hours of face time with your supervisee. Plus, you are allowed to give written feedback uh, one time. You can give whatever feedback you want along the process, but the rules kind of state that they will give you one draft and you are able to mark up that one draft uh, just one time. And then any, anything between there, you can, you can give verbal um, advice, pretty much whatever you want. They just say one draft can be written on. Minimum of four meetings total. 
So you will have a meeting during the junior quarter three, which is basically we're getting them started in the research process. They are probably going to show you an outline and then you can supervise them on the outline. They're going to show you their research question and you can help them narrow down their research question. They're going to show you some sources and you can say uh, this is a good source or maybe this is not a good source or hey, have you checked out this source? Junior year, quarter four, they're going to be starting the writing process. At the end of quarter four, they need to have 2,500 words written. Meeting senior quarter one, it's not coming back from the summer. This is when they will turn in their draft to you at some point during this quarter. Now, this is the draft that you are able to mark up. And you'll meet with them and go over your revisions. Meeting senior two, quarter two, uh, this is the Viva Voce. This is the reflections, the final reflection. You will meet after you, they turn in their final paper. You will meet with the student and you will just have a sit down and talk about the process. You will also have a part that you will have to type in. It talks about your process as the advisor. We'll get to that when I show you some links. At the end of each quarter, I will come around and ask you about your student and how they were doing and if they met the expectations for each quarter. Supervision do's and don'ts. You need to communicate with your students and coordinators. In general, students should come to you, but we know the reality. Many times uh, that is not the case. It is not your job to chase the kid down. That will be my job. It'll be my job to talk to you. If, however, you feel like you do want to reach out to your advisor, you can absolutely do that. Let me know if you need any support. Um, you're absolutely not bothering me. This is what I'm here for. Do provide guidance, give suggestions, and share resources. Um, use scaffolded questioning to guide students to conclusions slash ideas and embrace your role as a coach. You are a coach and not a choreographer. All right, you're helping them achieve this. You're not designing this for them. Don't create an idea or question on behalf of your students. Use their knowledge to guide them to a question. Um, it is not your job to check their grammar. They can um, have someone else read that, but if, if you want to give them grammatical advice, you can, but you don't have to. It's not your job. And don't exceed more than five hours with the student. Um, officially, you're only supposed to have three to five hours. Also, I am working on getting you all $50 per student that you advise. So we'll see if that gets approved. Wouldn't that be nice? And that is the end of the slideshow. Let's go take a look, a look at the extended essay website and some helpful links. Hello, welcome to the Extended SA website. I'm going to take you through this and show you some uh, links and docs that will be very helpful for you. If you'd like to spend some time, you can read uh, what I have to say about the Extended SA. Let's take a look at some deadlines. This year, the juniors were supposed to start in quarter two. This might change. I think I'm going to just start everything in quarter three moving forward. But it's possible that the juniors already have the research question it's possible that they've already found you and they've talked to you, and it's possible that they've started the, the reflection form already. Moving forward, I'm just going to move this to quarter three. But in general, at the end of quarter three, the students need to have the research question. They need to meet with you. They need to fill out the first part of their ERP form, which I'll talk about that in just a moment. They need to submit sources. They need to submit an outline and they need to write at least 500 words. That's the goal by the end of this quarter. Then by the end of the fourth quarter, uh, well, going into the fourth quarter, the goal is that they're ready to start writing. All right, they kind of got a taste for writing, and now they're really ready to start writing. So by the end of the fourth quarter, they will submit 2,500 words to you, and then I will come around to you and ask you if they did it. And they will also complete the second part of their ERP form, which again, I'll talk about that in just a moment. Their senior year coming back, so maybe they worked on it a little bit over the summer, maybe they didn't. 
They're going to have some time during quarter one, but by the end of quarter one, they need to submit a 3,000 word rough draft. This is the rough draft where you are able to mark up. Um, you can write on it. Uh, you know, don't, don't write stuff for them, but you can underline and highlight. And then uh, they will meet with you and you'll go over your suggestions. Senior year, quarter two, they will submit their final draft. This is what we do for, um, it's basically their final in TOK. They have to submit that. Complete the Viva Voce, which is the third and final official reflection. You'll sit down with them. You'll discuss the process. Ideally, again, this is going to happen before the end of the semester. I'd like to just, we're going to start it junior year, quarter three. We're going to end it senior year, quarter two. I think that's how we're going to move forward with this. Okay, let's go to some EE links and docs. Helpful links and docs. May 2024, who knows how old this video will be at this point, but at some point these students will have filled out this. And these are all of our potential advisors. If you're a potential advisor, you are probably watching this video. This is what the research question is currently. They have their potential topic and that kind of thing. Let me give you some other stuff. Ah, video to advisors, that will be up there. EE packet for students and advisors. This is a little bit more in depth. This is going to change a little bit. Uh, it's evolving as I work through the kinks. That's not going to be too important right now. The reflection process. Here is the ERP form that I mentioned before. So let me open this up. The students have to complete this form, and this is criteria. Oh, I believe it's the last criteria. And as you can see, uh, there's a little section here for a first reflection. This is gonna happen after they get their research question figured out and after they've met with you maybe the first time. The interim reflection, this will happen going into the summer. They have to fill this out. And then the final reflection. This is where you will sit down with the, your advisee and discuss the process and they will reflect on the process. I did, I did good here, I did here, I, I learned this, I learned this. And then you, once they figure this out, once they do that, then you will have supervisor comments. So let's go look at an example from this. And let me go ahead and click out of there. Here's an example. So as you can see, it's just a reflection. Um, not much going on, but they do get a lot of points for it. So I want to encourage you to read through one of these examples at some point, and you can see uh, what the Viva Voce is meant to look like. And also you can see some supervisor comments that might help you, you know, if you're trying to figure out what you want to say. Um, there's videos as well if you'd like more education on that. The official EE guide, this is about a 300 something page official guide. Now, here's this is a this is spelled out a little nicer here. If you go here, IB online guide, you can use this to read up on your subject specific requirements. So take a look. Um, all kinds of fun stuff on here, but really you want to go down to subject specific guidance. Oh, it's been moved apparently. Interesting. Ah, I'll update that link for you. But here we are, we are in the subject specific guidance. And perhaps you are doing individuals and societies and the students have to pick one of these. So for example, history is a very common one. Mm -hmm -hmm. Overview. And you just need to read through this choice of topic. 10 year rule, there's all kinds of stuff. We have an example here of good research questions. We have focus versus broad. Let's keep looking through treatment of the topic. There's all kinds of information. And if you are advising a student, it's gonna be important for you to go read through this. All right, once the student chooses what they are doing, 
then you probably, yeah, you definitely want to go read through this so you are advising appropriately. Okay, E exemplars. These students have to read through one of these exemplars. They pick whatever they're working on, and they have to go pick an exemplar, and they have to read through it. And you can see there's an example of the student work. Here's what an extended essay looks like. Um, notice the title page. Notice their name is not on it. You don't have to worry about that. That's what I have to worry about. They have to put a table of contents on. They have to do an introduction. They have to have a body. They have to have a conclusion. They have to have sources. So please go and check that out. Oh, e exemplars. Where was I? You can also see how this was graded. And this particular extended essay got a 20 out of 34. All right, I'm going to click out of that. Assessment criteria. Um, I'm going to go over the assessment checklist with them. Steps to develop a research question. If you would like to, you can check that out. Here's sample research questions. This is a really good compilation of some good research questions. Now, research questions need to be focused enough where they can't necessarily write a book about it. If they can write a book about it, then it's probably not focused enough. So one thing you can do to narrow down the research question is you can add some prepositional phrases. So for example, here's a good one. Uh, what was the impact of Ho Chi Minh's allegiance to Lenin? It's a little too broad. So what you can do is you can narrow it down. Uh, to what extent is always a good way to start a research question. Um, and they used a time period. So they said in 1920. That's always a good way to narrow it down. Uh, it needs to be, it can't be too broad, but it can't be too focused. They do have to write 4,000 words on it. So what I've done is I've put some guidance on here, steps to develop a research question, and that might help. Proper but in general, the students just have to pick MLA or APA, pick one of those, and use that as their as the way they cite and source. Um, whatever feels comfortable, whatever you feel comfortable, whatever they feel comfortable, they can pick whichever they want. This is going to be a big one. So it's very important. Descriptive versus critical writing. So as you're advising, you need to watch out. Are they writing descriptive or are they writing critical? So what I've done is a we have compiled a list here, descriptive versus critical, and just the students are also going to read through this. They are aware that in the past, students have been marked off for writing descriptively versus critically. So hopefully they have read this and they understand what they're supposed to do. Um, organizes the presentation. This is not on you. The students, they know what to do. They, they should know. I gave them a presentation checklist. Um, they should go through all of this before they turn in their final draft. Let's see here. Grade matrix, we already went through. Academic honesty, the students will know about. Ethical guidelines, the students will know about. And then a few other, a few other good resources from around the web. There you go. That's pretty much the EE in a nutshell. Hopefully these sources will help you to be a great advisor. I wish you luck.